All right, welcome into the half. Sorry, I was looking at something else real quick. Um, <laughs> so, welcome into the half. My name is Aaron Montgomery. Uh, this extremely awesome gentleman next to me is Eric Campbell. Eric, hey, hello, sir. G glad to have you back. It was Hi. not the same without you. Glad to be back, you know? <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. As we all know, if you've ever had to uh, be gone or sick or out yeah. or handling that, which uh, looks like a lot of people dealing with yeah. that lately uh -huh. uh, for reasons we all know. Um, no, that wasn't my reason, but uh, for reasons we all know. And then you guys know how it is that, that first week when you get back or when you're not at 100%. Uh, forgive me a little bit for being weird. And also for the Professor Eric look, uh, I'll, right. I'll go ahead and go live and tell you yeah. guys what happened. I had a, a minor eye injury, not a big deal, but it turned into an eye infection. And if you guys know how that's treated, um, a week of putting goop in your eye, I'm about done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm about done. I'm tired of being blind, and I certainly uh, I'm tired of wearing my glasses. But hey, yeah. it'll be well, a while probably. Well, you look, you look good. You look very, uh, very uh, uh, what, what, distinguished. <laughs> <laughs> the, the gray in the beard is helping with the distinguished look. Like yeah, I said, this is the, yes. the Professor Eric gear. I just uh, maybe wearing the the flat cap and the mechanic shirt like I often do probably is not helping that, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> it works good. enough for me. All good. All right. Um, so we've got Chuck uh, checking in. Good morning, Chuck. Good morning, Chuck. And then Christy, good afternoon from sunny and hot Ohio. Are you guys experiencing a heat wave there in Albuquerque as well, Eric? Yes, we were. It was uh, over 100 for multiple days. Now, you know, because as a Phoenix and, you know, Arizona guy, you know what it's like to do, you know, 100 plus weather. Uh, yeah. I know you haven't been there for a bit, but you know what it's like. Uh, we definitely have been having the heat yeah. wave and uh, suffering. Any Anytime you jump in a car. Also, by the way. Yeah, on a personal note, yeah, dry eye problems and uh, 100 plus degree weather. It has been just a pleasant time and, yeah, <laughs> to be nice. in Albuquerque not, right now. Not, not nice at all, yeah. <laughs> not nice well, at all. Uh, not to uh, try to trump you or anything like that, but yeah. um, we are getting to, uh, we're going to be in 100 today, 103 yep. tomorrow. And in St. Louis, that's not very common. We don't get to 100 very often. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because the problem is, is we still get the humidity, right? So, like I, I just think about walking outside and I start sweating. It's weird. <laughs> All right. I, well, I, I understand. The humidity is what makes it the worst. I, I remember distinctly going to visit family in Wisconsin where it's like 90 odd degrees out and literally like 90 something percent humidity. Or I, I remember very distinctly a trip down to Austin, Texas, where it was warm outside and the cars were just beating up with moisture. And I just <laughs> you just want to die. Being from the desert, you're like, no, no, no. The dry heat really is a thing. It is better. Yeah shade does make a difference yeah no it's it's unfortunately we also had a, a return of the monsoons right before the heat wave oh so, so for us even too, though it's yeah. not major major like 30 odd percent humidity in new mexico with That's this heat yeah. that was not cool yeah, yeah. <laughs> super yeah. not cool no, so we're all melting well. too <laughs> both literally and figuratively not cool, totally. <laughs> not cool. all right Lyndon, uh, good morning and uh, eric hoping you're feeling better yeah Excellent. getting there getting there all right forgive me a little bit on today's education friday if i'm not, <laughs> not at 100 but we'll get yeah that. <laughs> minor improvements that's what it's all about all right yes todd uh, the typical yo yo Todd's up. In. mr fat dad wholesale over there uh mm -hmm. my friend addy joining us addy thank nice. you so much for being here um we've got barb joining us from north central minnesota hope everyone yeah. is having a great day absolutely all right um Ramona says, good morning. Just a bit sick. Just a slight fever, courtesy of my recent trip to Texas. Better yep. soon, I'm sure. I heard a lot of that from, from the AG folks, the uh, Applique Getaway folks. There's a, um, a little bit of illness that came back with some people. So, yeah, yeah that, that yeah. still can happen, people. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. be careful. Yeah. Yep. Do your best. Just, uh, as I told Nikki earlier on uh, two regular guys, just uh, what, what I did was <laughs> lots of rest and zinc and uh, um vitamin C and, and, and to do that, I you, you ever have those little emergency packets that like, I don't know if you've ever seen those, but anyhow, short story long. That's what I did. Um, all right. So, uh, Yusta, good morning. Oh, all right. <laughs> that's my fault. Sorry. That's all right. So, hey, we're, we're having fun. I was going to answer a question and I messed up the branding trying to do it. So I'm oh, sorry about that's that. All right. All right. Well, this one, what Chuck said is your image embroidered just an image. He's talking about the little image in the first uh, portion of this and actually i'm going to show you guys this is from the take up branding okay the bug up in the upper right hand corner that's yeah. actually embroidered yeah that's really embroidered in a photo okay. taken of it so if you see this ec logo and that yeah that's actually embroidered that one is not a digital image so okay. to be clear so one of the ways I, yeah, i've had it reproduced multiple times
was printed from the embroidered image, but I just took a nicely lit photo of it and then rescanned it, used that nicely lit photo um, adjusted for print. So that's yeah. what I do when I'm doing that. If yeah. people are wondering, hey, there, there's your, <laughs> your helpful handy tip there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Oops. Jump to Mike's here. Uh, comment, sure. Professor Eric. I smell a new mini segment of the take up <laughs> and a cartoon character. If you guys don't know, that's the world that I came from. The first teaching I ever really did uh, was more of, of that nature. So, yeah, cool. that's the, if you guys have been in my classes, you know, I teach like a lecture hall class. It, it feels very much like like going to class. So that I, I'm I'm not too forward to that concept to say <laughs> that to get you the tweed jacket with the elbow patches uh, I just need to, to keep on the diet so the tweed jacket doesn't make me look like a tweed tent but yeah that's, <laughs> uh, that's what we got to do <laughs> all right uh, Cindy King almost afternoon hey y'all yes. from Texas I so get a good y'all in there um, <laughs> bar below Cindy all right yes. Bill thank you for checking in um, I think Bill's out west-ish, so it's still morning time, right? Yep. <laughs> Mina yeah. tuning in from Canada. Excellent. Thanks for being here, Mina. Nice. All right. uh, everybody saying hi to each other. I love that. Love that. Uh, yeah, that Eric. Was, that was Chucks. Yep. Okay, that was right, embroidered. But if you want to see, I did an entire episode about doing uh, faux embroidery stuff. So yeah. actually, if you go back to the take up, there is an episode, a couple episodes back, where I talk about faux embroidery, or I called it digitizing for print. If you want to know more about how to make print images that look like embroidery, I actually did an entire episode on it, and there's an article in Images Magazine that's linked from that. So um, don't have it with me right this second. Don't, no, I don't right. want to take the show just doing it, but you can check that out if you're interested. Oh, yeah, definitely go. Just head over to ericcampbell.com and, yes. and uh, go to the Take Up menu uh, selection, and, and you can find it there. So yes. um, we'll, we'll wait. You guys go do that. We'll wait. <laughs> we won't be here when you come back there's only a 30 minute show we gotta roll we have a hard out today that's right we do have a hard out today yeah ramona is on the fast track to wellness excellent good this is good um, this is good <laughs> cindy says y'all are giving texas a bad rap not intentional no, no, it's not it's not texas's fault that these things happen <laughs> yeah this is reality um it's reality sounds like me too okay yeah um Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah, this is from Fat Dad from Todd. Seen a fair amount of, and by the way, I saw that you tagged me in this. Haven't had a chance to get back to it. Uh, seen a fair amount of embroidered patch slash ornaments at ASI. Do you have a video article blog on making ornaments? Not exactly. I'm going to talk about it a little tiny bit probably today on the show, but I think I'll probably do something more with it. Um, if you've seen my stuff about patch making, making an ornament is making a patch. Most okay. of the time when you see those, uh, they are either sewing the loop on during the, the portion of the time when they're edging the patch. Sometimes I've seen people do that. Okay. Uh, sometimes people are adhering a loop to the back of the patch. Or I've even seen people sandwich two patches so that it's a two-sided ornament and sew it. Oh. Uh, the other way you can do that is by adding a loop. If you're making a patch and you're doing it on soluble backing, you can add a loop. You have to make sure it's tied well into the patch. So the, it really has to be overlapped into the patch design. You can make a loop like freestanding lace so heavy underlay like a edge run plus double zigzag nice and heavy and then a satin stitch around the back side of that thing you just right cover it right back over and you make a loop so that when you wash away or heat away or tear away or cut away your stabilizer you have a little loop that's made of thread you can do that too uh the yeah. home market does it a lot when they call it freestanding lace fsl they will make a loop as part of the embroidery process you can do that with smaller end patches but when you're seeing it on finished patches a lot of those loops that you see on the ASI patches, they're actually like a piece of cordage of some kind. There's a piece of cord or a piece of something that they're using to make a loop. And that's usually stu uh, stuck on, stitched on, fused on, depending on, on how they decide to make it. Gotcha. So um, I don't have something on topic like that. The thing is, that depending on the kind of ornament you're making, you're either usually making a freestanding lace piece or you're making a patch. And there's very little difference in the rest of the process aside from attaching a loop to it. Gotcha. So right. if you there look you at all the stuff on patches for sure, or like I said, um, freestanding lace, but with the patch stuff, the cords, it's often literally stitched yeah. on, stitched into the edge or glued on, heat pressed on. Yeah. Yeah. Todd said, Depends. yeah, it looks like a cord. Got it. Yeah. So yeah, totally. Todd, does this mean you're getting an embroidery machine? 
Uh, can you buy that at uh, <laughs> ASI? I don't know. Um, I'll say this much. Uh, I, this may be a future article. If so, I'll, I'll try. And, I'll credit you with the fact that you said, hey, Eric, please write this. After that, it's just me. I was going to say, idea. I, you, just gave, him, you just gave him credit for it. So yeah, now man. the article, it's all you, buddy. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, and I know some people do it. Uh, Jeff, who's often on here, Jeff Fuller, not on here today, but he, uh, uh, he kind of joined with me on that because I was telling people, you know, ornaments are a cool way to use uh, patches or to use freestanding lace style backgrounds and you okay. add a logo directly to it and it's a great way to make cool stuff in the holidays uh something to toss in a box to make people happy um he did that for a bunch of his clients uh, i've done it before too same kind of thing you make essentially a big freestanding lace background this mesh background that you can wash the material away and you sew a logo onto it and you can use an existing corporate logo to do it gotcha. um, so there's there's cool things you can do but it's something where really depends on how you want to do it but you could take a commercial patch right now that's made that's made for heat press and heat press a cord to the back of it stitch a cord to the back of it glue a cord to the back of it and it'd be fine for an ornament because it's not also it's not taking like amazing shear force um the other cool thing you do see too is there are patches that are made with buttonholes check this out there are patches that are made with a little tab on the top of the buttonhole that are made to button onto the pocket area of garments or there are garments that come with wow. a small button made to hold that patch they yeah. hang on like a tag you can have those made people like pen emblem will make you a patch that has this buttonhole tag on it and you can have that done and you could also use one of those for multiple uses including throwing a loop through it and now it's an ornament with no extra work so like i said I, and honestly most of the patch companies probably will do this for you because they make different kinds of accessories uh yeah. cool things also i'm seeing a bunch of lately um key tags marrow edged key tags are huge luggage tags all made by emblem companies so if you're hiring it out check out your local emblem company your sun texas your pen emblems your ensign whoever's making your patches for you they probably already make something in this range but you can also use existing patches and add cords it's not a huge huge imposition to do yeah so. awesome that's good okay. information thanks eric no all right uh jeff good afternoon and uh cindy texas strong we, we really are not trying to make texas look bad no, trust me we're not we love texas no yeah, no problems yeah, with texas yeah yep yeah. all right machine good to see you uh tune in from carmel california so thanks for nice. being here machine um let's see here yeah bill he's from northeast illinois <laughs> I, thought, I thought he was closer to but he says morning starts when i decide to wake up he's a night owl okay i, I can understand that. That i i feel that i feel that I'm, yeah. i resemble that remark all right i may todd. or may not finish most of my work in the wee hours of the morning yeah exactly all right todd can't wait to see and share that video um and <laughs> Todd also right. mentions I have people for embroidery, but Todd, <laughs> you have to have all the toys. So I don't, you know, I'm, when's that, when is that embroidery machine showing up at your place, Todd? That's what I want to know. All right. <laughs> right. Uh, Sheila. Hey, y'all. She was spending some time in Texas. So you got to get your y'alls in. I like that. Um, <laughs> Jeff says, I heard I need to jump over. We just got here. No, Jeff, you just got mentioned because you are one of the other people like me, one of the few who agrees that uh, making ornaments on your embroidery machine can be something cool to do in yeah. a corporate setting. Uh, I've done it and I know you've done it. So I just gave you some credit because I know you're one of the people who has also done this and people were, uh, you know, I have had someone before tell me, why would you bother doing that? But I've had it lead to a bunch of sales. So it's hard to, there you go. <laughs> it's hard to I argue. I'm doing you're that because I like sales. <laughs> yep. I was probably doing that because people, a little bit of extra something that you can add in, especially if you know how to set it up right, makes a big difference to your yes, sales. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Let me yeah. tell you how many times I've added an item. People didn't want to have that item come back as an order the next day, or at least didn't didn't know they wanted yet. Yeah, yeah. You People assume, that's the thing we, we do in this business all the time. It drives me nuts. We assume our customers know everything we know. Why would they need us if they did? Yeah. We assume that they're aware of all the products we're aware of, all the processes we're aware of, and of course they're not. How are they going to know that? I mean, you can either hope that they do the research on their own why you'd want them to do that i don't know because they're just going to find your competitors <laughs> or you can show them something you think fits for their business and now you are an awesome hero who gave them a little gift and who has you know shown them the way that's that's the way exactly to yeah exactly so, yeah all right well ramona says yep yep they were talking about you your ears were burning <laughs> i'm sure your ears burn a lot my friend <laughs> and then todd uh, embroidery machine happening in 2023 uh, You've heard it here first, folks. So. Hey, I'm not going to argue. I, it's, <laughs> it's a noble art. <laughs> yeah. So, Eric, are you going to uh, um, show up at Todd's place for a Tuesday with Todd episode and and show him how to use it? Or that's a that's a heck of a drag for a Tuesday with Todd. <laughs> to all know. the way up to Illinois. I, I don't know. We'll have to yeah. see. <laughs> yeah, I made Todd come to my place for an episode with the DTG, but that's a different well, story. All right. Um, 
Ah, uh, yes, Sheila, yeah. agreeing with Eric here. Surprise and delight goodies do often lead to extra orders. Let me tell you how much delight and also like novelty and, and surprising people getting them excited about something, how much that rubs off on you as a business or as a person, you have no idea. Yeah. People are jaded to a lot of things. When they see something new and cool, they're they're interested. And yeah. so the super good plans, seriously. There you go. All right. Um, Ramona, um, you know that ornament can be a great marketing tool for local business. Just a thought. That's awesome. Well, great idea. That is absolutely how I use it. And like I said, uh, very much like I was talking about, you know, discussing Jeff's stuff. One of the things that I've done is you can make a generic ornament template that's freestanding lace that will hold up to most logos. Hmm. Or you can use fabrics to do it. A lot of people I know do uh, like felty style ornaments where you can cover the back by throwing a, a second felt piece on it. And it's very much like home embroidery stuff. And I know that's why the commercial guys get freaked. They're yeah. like, oh man, are we doing crafts in the <laughs> in the shop today? And I'm like, yeah. maybe, but if you can imagine a, a shop, you know, you've got, you've got a business that's ordering from you regularly, but kind of orders the same stuff all the time. We're coming up toward the holidays or hey, Christmas in July. Like we haven't heard that marketing thing for yeah. their lives. Um, throw something in there like that and that novelty means they're going to take that thing out and hang it up and think of you every time that they're looking at it they're especially like i said put their logo on it put their logo on it. it's not a present if your logo's on it if your logo's on it, it's still marketing if their logo's on it it's a gift um it's not that you can't do both i love doing you know promo stuff for with your own logo too is great but if you're giving it to that company and you already have their logo digitized do an ornament blank that you can throw a, lo a, a left chest size logo in and make them for your top 10 customers. You don't even have to do it for a ton of people. Yeah. yeah. Do top 10 customers to see, to get further penetration into their markets. Or if you are going to pitch a customer you want desperately, leave something with them that will keep you top of mind. I mean, yeah. Come on. It's yeah. a great idea. All right. All right. Well, Eric, you know, I always just kind of go in chronological order. So even though the conversation probably would be better if I didn't, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> Todd's using, would be using the embroidery machine for samples and personal use. Um, that works. Now, uh, Todd said he could fly out to now. Eric's in, in New Mexico, not Arizona, but I'd say you're off by a, a little. Yeah, <laughs> you're off you're, by a little. Overshoot it just a hair. So, <laughs> so just make make the turn in Albuquerque, but actually just stay there in Albuquerque, right? Is that nice. what Bugs nice. Bunny used to say? He missed his yes, turn indeed. in Albuquerque. All right, everybody um, always makes that left. My <laughs> my eighties are showing. All right, um, <laughs> Cindy says uh, at Applique Getaway, I got some fun ideas for patches. Just yep. making kind of mini size patch. Sheila yeah. had some great jewelry and patch items. Awesome. Oh yeah, I've seen some awesome stuff done with embroidered jewelry. It's a, it, it's pretty cool. And I've done a little a couple pieces myself, but it's something that yeah, it takes a little more, uh, you know, putting things together than I was willing to do. But still, there you go. I, I I know that there are people who are making money doing it. Yep, you just got to be in the right market for it. Yep. All right, Ramona says uh, could have been you that I heard it from. So <laughs> oh, doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and Sheila laughed about it, the crafter comment right yeah and, and yeah, i know you weren't yeah. saying that you were saying oh no that. totally I, I it's more that i've had people tell me that i yeah. literally have had somebody in one of my patch classes now by the way this hasn't happened in the last few years where patches have gotten hot now yeah. when i first started teaching patches was multiple years ago when i first started talking about patches many years ago when i first wrote my article about small run in-house patch making and people flatly yeah. were just saying that doesn't make money you can't make money making patches in your own shop flat out just were telling me there's no reason to go to those classes because you can't make money at that just sub wow. them out and this is back in the battle days of massive minimum so i don't know what they were talking about uh yeah. it sounds like some people who've never dealt with a smaller you know a smaller client base before yeah absolutely. with smaller order tallies now that small orders are the way of the world you know hey maybe a different yeah. thing <laughs> those dinosaurs are gone well, now so yeah um Yep, it's not yep. it's not one month turnarounds and 500 piece minimums these days kids yeah it hasn't been for a while yeah all right jeff says i did that a couple yep. years ago uh freestanding lace ornaments now i know mm -hmm. what fl fsl means so they uh offer offer one for every employee so um hashtag money there you go. <laughs> um <clears throat> there we go and then excuse me eric can you let me grab a yeah, Ju so yeah justin is in arizona yeah he is you go see Justin. If Justin wants to wants to foster you through your embroidery machine, I won't stop him. <laughs> <laughs> he could do that. That's fine. There you go. He's got a shop that he's working with. You could be over there and see uh, see what he's doing. So that's yeah, fine. totally, totally. All right, cool. Well, um, I also yeah. wager there's somebody in Illinois you could talk to too. I'm betting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right, let's see what Barb's got here. Yeah. Embroidered felties makes a good add in special gift in orders. I like that. So Absolutely. tell me about a felty, Eric. What's a, do you know what well, that is? It depends. Yeah. Well, it depends on what kind of felty you're talking about. Okay. I was talking about felt patches, but essentially little felties, it can be like a, almost like a little stuffed animal. You can stuff them or not. You can also just make little felt embroidered pieces. And the great thing about doing it with felt, if you're worried about making something that's going to have an edge that might fray, felt is not going to do that. So you can make a design and cut out the outside edge of this design whatever this is you know ornament or whatever ornament yeah. patch um little stuffed creature whatever it is okay. and you can make that felty the thing is um when you do that you can also if you do it craft style you can add the felt in the back under your stabilizer while you're working on it and you can actually sew the last run in and have a two-sided piece where you're covering the embroider in the back and make little felt critters creatures and also oh. any sorts of items you want to make the other thing i've done with that believe it or not uh, of my own is cat toys I made felt cat toys on the embroidery machine in the hoop doing that. Um, cool. Where uh, you, you stick some catnip between them when they're finished, between the two layers, and then you have to stitch uh, on a machine or something else the last couple little pieces. You leave an opening. So, um, yeah, once again, craft style stuff. But the cool thing is if you're just making a felt patch, especially if it doesn't have to be two-sided where you don't want to have a bunch of extra labor in it, throwing a piece of felt on your machine with another run, even if you're adding a second thing to make a border for it, is very little time added to your process. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't, and felt is super forgiving as an embroidery material, so you can use a design that you're already using. Uh, nice. You can use a design that you've got for a left chest and you throw it on a piece of felt, throw a border around it, hey, put the loop into it like I talked about earlier, and yeah. suddenly you have a felt ornament you can hand out. Yeah. Um, super, super simple stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, so Barb says, love freestanding lace. Yeah, uh, fun stuff. Jeff says, Todd could go to Iowa as well. And, 100%. Um, yep. Todd, Illinois is cold in the winter, so uh, no. Yeah. Hey, come, come on down, seriously. Or hey, Justin, if you get an extra round, Todd's looking. It's, it's nice in uh, yeah, in New Mexico and uh, Arizona, Arizona in the uh, in the winter. All right. Um, uh, Ramona's talking to Cindy here. I have a couple of sets of what I call button badges, theme sets that are collectible. Yep. Cool. Very oh, cool. by the way, you should, guys, you should look. Um, there's a lovely little set of patches that Lisa Shaw, my compatriot and brilliance, made with huh? these little. And I know it's goofy, but they're like little merit merit badge size patches cool. little fruit icons on them she's got those out there for free why not play with those like just Absolutely. just have fun if you want to make little tiny felt badges little tiny badges like that they're fun yeah, just good love stuff it. love 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 all right jeff made dog toys um yeah all right cindy says fsl free stain lace fyi yes. if you are a commercial <laughs> embroiderer you can get matching bobbins from glide thread company yeah i have on your uh, own if you've seen hab and dash threads going around out there those the, those folks have colored bobbins um you're definitely going to want to have some sort of colored bobbin if you're doing complete freestanding wash away lace uh you can wind your own bobbins too if you want to that's another thing you can do but uh great thing because we're talking about doing this as an added thing for a customer yeah you know make the lace part part of the logo a different color have them all be black so all you have to have is black bobbins and black thread or red or something where you can buy colored bobbins in that round and mm. do that and just do the logo on top of it um potentially with some sort of outlining something else to to offset it and then you don't have to worry about that uh, like not a color for every company in bobbins you just pick one that works yeah but yeah you cool. can totally do that it's cool all idea. right i love it todd uh, says personalized cat toys has to be a great money maker uh, can be can be there are lots of people who do stuff in the pet industry i remember writing an article about um the pet industry stuff and i was shocked at how much money some of the people i talked to were making on collars with names now colors are hard to do uh, webbing collars are a pain uh for quality reasons and can be a pain for a hooping but um a lot of the other stuff they were doing like harnesses and they were doing things like uh, laying ribbon onto existing collars and, and fusing that on so they didn't have to stitch through a full webbing but some of the stuff, like it's it's crazy. Very much like other markets that have that high margin, like bridal is another one. Um, there are just markets where you'd be shocked how much you can get for you know a few thousand stitches at the at the right time at the right place when people want it for particular reasons. Yeah, uh, pet exactly. markets on that range, people treat their pets sometimes better than their kids. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to say that, but it's totally true. 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 Yep. yep. All right, Ramona. Exactly. Small rounds. Um, Todd yep, says yep, yep. content creation, education, and warm weather. I'm in. So, right, <laughs> let's do it. Uh, all right, Cindy. Uh, Barb is talking to Cindy here, um, <laughs> but still good to know. Yeah, Habendash has the Filtech magnetic bobbins in many colors. I love that. Yep, um, a lot of people like those matching bobbins. Yeah, Sheila also loves that stuff. So, yeah, yeah, 
Okay. It's it's okay. definitely something like that. <laughs> Cindy does not like dog toys. Their dog tears them apart on the first day. <laughs> she has to guard her nerd star from her yeah. dogs. <laughs> All right. Jeff says, I've seen the drop, the tension trick, so you don't see the bobbin, but I don't like to adjust tension for that. I don't love that because I've seen so many people accidentally bird nest their machine by pulling all that top thread into the <laughs> into the bobbin case because they're not real great at doing that tension adjustment. Um, but yeah, you can. I like the matching bobbin thing. I'll say this too. Even as a commercial shop, we pretty much always had at least white and black bobbins at all times. And on lots of dark materials, we use black bobbin. Um, yeah. I think it's a better look. Black bobbin, black stabilizer. I think it's just a nice look on dark garments. It just looks better uh, if you have the ability to do it. I think it's just one of those finish quality things you can do. And I'll say this too, uh, matching bobbins on things like scarves, um, high end, high quality scarves, things that you're going to see the back at some point, uh, yeah. some beanies as well. I will often do at the very least a dark colored or less uh, visible bobbin color if there's something that I can do with it. Not not every client wants it, not every client merits it, but if it's something, you, you know, if you have a high margin client and you want to get that nice fit and finish, colored bobbins, one way to do it. Yeah, awesome. All right. Yep, yep. All right. Well, Eric, anything else that uh, we need to talk about today? We we may we may cut out of here just a smidge early. Um, yeah. Aaron's got got something to do. So I think what we're going to do is for all the times I went over, <laughs> we're going <laughs> to cut a few minutes off and let Aaron get out of here on time. All right. All right. Well, um, let's see. Let's not forget anybody though. Here, Cindy says I've been yep. known to wind a bob and free-handed. <laughs> oh, no, <Yikes>. thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't embroider, and I that sounds painful, no. I, so. I have um, done it once in my life, and it was horrible. I had a sewing yeah. machine that with no bobbin winder, and had to have a bobbin. Yeah, and yeah. boy, no, thank you. And then uh, Lisa agreement on black bobbin and black stabilizer, less notable. I like that. I, I mean, it's just something that you probably don't think about as a decorator because you're looking at the front, right? Oh, yeah. And sure. but, um, as an embroiderer, you got to think about that stuff. I love that. So. Oh, yeah, that, and also you can use a little bit more sturdy. Uh, because sometimes people will try and use really, really clear, like not clear, but really light no shows yeah. just on garments because the white is showing so much through on like a black performance garment. The black mesh will look a little less obtrusive and you actually can use a little more and not have it or have it not cut it so tight and still have a nice look that look, lays flat and has you know less of that show through. Yeah. So, yeah, there you do, go. It. All right. do it. Cool. Eric, All high right. five, sir. Great to see you uh, next right. week, guys. We'll be right back here. Same bad time, same bad channel, right? That's how <laughs> thanks for all the input and thanks for the questions, folks. Sorry for it be embroidery only when I came back, but I guess you yeah. need extra dose. embroidery only. We got to get that out. We got to get, yeah, <laughs> we were missing that. We didn't have any embroidery talk last time. All, all right. right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one, everybody. Run away, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Running away. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.